Frederick Hardin, the archaeologist, had been lying in his confined canvas cot for eight days and nights. A young Chavanti native fanned him constantly to keep away the mosquitoes and the tiny, vicious film flies. Occasionally, Sir Cedric tried to sit up, despite the adhesive strapped over his bare chest like a cocoon. But it was always the same. He sank back with a groan. <coughs> The Mato Grosso interior. Harbin. Three broken ribs. Harbin? Sir Cedric Harbin. But boa constrictors are no respecters of titles. What's a knight of the realm to a great reptile disturbed from its slumber? It acted in the only way possible. It whipped its coils around the blundering human and squeezed and squeezed. And Sir Cedric, archaeologist, passed from the dimmed light of the jungle into and beyond midnight. Biotech, the new soak and pre-wash powder presents Beyond Midnight by Michael McKay. Recently I received a letter from Mrs. Myra Strawn of Main Road, Rose Bank in the Cape in relation to our product Biotech. It was quite a lengthy letter and emphasized many of the points we've been making over the past months about biotechs. She said that when the product first came on the market, she and her daughters were a bit skeptical, but nevertheless decided to give it a go. And indeed, she is now most enthusiastic and a great supporter. She recommends it to neighbors and friends. Another letter from Mrs. J. Lake of uh, Hootfrey Mine Springs said that she wished to congratulate the makers of biotechs and went on to say that she had two children, six and seven years of age, and that her spin dryer was not able to cope with the stubborn stains of their play clothes. Well, nowadays, she soaks with Biotex overnight in cold water and finds her washing much whiter, and colored clothes are brighter and stain-free. Are you in pain? Uh, not much. Just, just bored and disgusted. Uh, haven't you gone to bed yet? Poor darling, soaking wet. Get uh, off from that dog. Diana, oh, my dearest. Uh, how the devil can you be so bright and cheery after the confounded mess I've made of this expedition? Walking into that burr constrictor like a, a blasted tourist who never set foot in the Matto Grosso before. Uh, oh. I don't know why I ever let this foundation talk me to this jaunt. Uh, on our honeymoon. What was I thinking of? Dragging you into this cauldron. Darling, if you can't sleep, at least try to relax. Here. How real. You can't go hunting your precious lost city with three broken ribs and that's all there is to it. Now stop fretting. Mario's got the situation well in hand. Mario. Oh, yes, yes. A oh, handsome and dashing young guy. Handsome? <laughs> you see, I hadn't noticed. Cedric, I do believe you're jealous. Of Mario. Ah, senora, you're like a jungle orchid. <laughs> oh, darling, he's so corny. Did he really say that to you? Insolent half-breed swine. Send him in here, I'll sack him right now. <laughs> you do nothing of the kind. 
All Brazilians make part of it, every girl they meet from Europe. <laughs> it's part of their good neighbor policy. But Mario's a very efficient guy. He's kept his war happy Chavantes from tracing off to start something with other tribes. He's kept a supply of mandioca and apodiora without trading half our equipment to get it. And he's the only guide in Belém who had the vaguest idea how to reach that lost city of yours. Remember, all you have the proof is that silly old paper of the Biblioteca Nacional in Rio. <laughs> Mario doesn't believe it exists. Ah, uh, Mario. If Colonel Fawcett and his sons died trying to find it in 1925, there must be... Oh, if I were only off this ridiculous cot... We're only two days' march from the place. I'd stake my life on it. Darling, there'll be other expeditions. You can try again. Now you've got to get well and strong enough to be carried back to Belém. Diana, I'll never understand what a lovely creature like you saw in a dried-up, crotchety old thing like me. <laughs> <laughs> my whole life changed when you turned away from that ass forester and looked at me and smiled that night at the Explorers Club in Rio. It was the most wonderful thing that had ever... Darling, we leave at daybreak, Mario and I, for the supplies. As I know. Daybreak. Mm How -hmm. do you back? Of course. Next Thursday's our first anniversary. We've been married a whole month. You don't really think I'd spend that day with Mario and a lot of grinning tapirates babbling picanto, picanto. And Diana left the tent to complete plans for the short journey at dawn. The river village of Mantura lay only a few miles down the Rio das Mortes, the river of death. There, Diana could send a wireless message via Belém to the foundation. Also, Mario could replenish their dwindling supplies of quinine and coffee. Oh, I don't like these new porters Mario signed up. Dirty, ragged Orobos. Vulture people, the inspector of Indians called them. Vulture people. Cannibals or something, if I remember rightly. Oh, sleep. Wish I could. His lovely young wife was lost in a tangle of undergrowth and looped lianas. When the explorer woke once more, his head ached and the tent was steamy with mid-morning heat. Here, yeah, you. Uh, bon, bon dia. Is Senor dormio bien? Ah, muita bene. Where's the senora? She had a breakfast yet? Uh, senora, te. Uh, te. Uh, senora, she's uh, gone. Uh, senora, uh, senor Mario. Uh, it's uh, gone. Uh, let you sleep. You, you seek no Well... Gone already. Should be back tomorrow at sundown. Matur is only a few miles down the river. Hey. What are you grinning about, eh? What? Hey! Sly beggar. The devil's a matter with him. Hey! Boy! Senor, puritito, eh? Puriti, eh? Tell what should you bring, Ape? Burity, the chief. Sir Cedric recognized him suddenly from the dried palm fronds stuck in his pierced lower lip. 
like a spiky beard from his hairless chin. Uh, tell what? Come on. He had tried to sit up, to prop himself up by his elbows, a sense of foreboding suddenly knotting his stomach muscles. Yes, all right. A present. Come on, speak up. Senor, Senor, Senor Mario, no go down for you. Go up. No go Matura. Big boy. It's run away. Oh, boy, it's no come back. What? You're lying. I, I'll kill you. You're lying scum. I'll cut your tongue out for saying a thing like that. No, you lie. No, lie, Dr. Dow. It's the truth, <laughs> senor. Thank God, don't me no good. do not let me go to India. Let me go to boy. <sighs> Desert me in this condition, then. Or oh, would she? Could a middle aged husband ever be sure of a young and beautiful wife? Mario. Mario is young, virile, whereas me, getting old, one day I shan't be able to satisfy her needs. She requires someone. Mario. No! Boy. Boy. Do you... Do you happen to know which way my... Senor Mario went? Up river or down? It's not Capitan. Is there anyone who could find out for me? A tracker? A tracker could tell me which way the batalo took off, couldn't he? Uh, tracker, uh, Capitan, uh, see, tracker, though, but Buriti know now better. Ask Buriti, the chief, to look upon the senora's batalo. Buriti see all things today, yesterday, tomorrow. Yes, quite, chief and witch doctor. You'll just repeat the lie. If it is a lie. The inspector of Indians advised us to have purity because he's a brujo. Doctor, half crazed from addiction to yachting, but they see all things, the Prussians. Purity would know all about Diana and that sneaky Brazilian. All rumors, every remnant of local gossip finds its way to the ears of the Prussians, to be palmed off later as supernatural knowledge. But Purity, yes, he would know. Then. What's he been saying to me? Diana. No, I... I can't believe it. Boy, go. Fetch Purity back again, do you hear? Harbin waited. The suspicion of terrible things was being fanned in his mind. Purity came. He smoked a cigar holder-like pipe. A peculiar, acrid odor filled the tent. Harbin felt suddenly light-headed. Now, look here. I've no time for a lot of mumbo-jumbo. Put that pallid-smelly pipe away. Uh, senor, and... senor, do not speak. Bulleted brujo is not the ahuasca, the drug of the second sight. Oh, I've heard of that. Blasted load of nonsense. Maybe it isn't then. Gone. My wife, the senora. <laughs> Of the old Brugia said nothing for a long time. He puffed at the queer-shaped pipe and closed his eyes. Sir Cedric lay and cursed the whole of creation silently. At last, the ancient doctor's eyes opened. They go towards the rising sun. But are moved slow. There are three bears. How about this? The smiling ones sleep under the tall door. The man watches. Now he shoots the gun and kill a blood red Arara. He brings the feathers to the Senora. He laughs and thanks him, putting the feathers in her golden hair. Towards the rising sun. Not west, Matura. 
east to Goyas. Now, she's seeing the senora. She's seeing this song. Never try to bind me. It's her favorite song. You lie. Country fresh atmosphere in every room. Keep Airwick handy. Airwick is the air freshener that actually knocks odors right out of the air. It doesn't just mask them with heavy scent. Airwick is the modern air freshener. In economical bottle or a smart aerosol. Get Airwick. It makes breathing a little nicer. Coke, Coke. That's all you have to do, Coke. Soak, just for an hour to you. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Amazing new biotech soaks, stains away. Clean, clean, everything soon will be clean, clean for all the world to see. Soak, soak, stains away easily when you use new biotech. Get amazing new biotech today and let soaking do the washing. to place it on the finger of the one with the smiling face. A man with the golden moustache. Pick up ring and give it back Kimber. He was my best man and I did drop the ring. How could you possibly know? Did you over here, Diana, or myself? Some speed, of course. Nothing supernatural about that. Do you wish, Capitao, I should look into the future? The ayahuasca sends the eyes in all directions, able to see what is, what was, what will be. The devil you can. All right. What is to be? My wife's run off with a ruddy Brazilian, you say. She coming back? And Burity the Brugeau puffed again at the pipe, and his eyes began once more to take on that opaque, drugged look, the pupils widening until the iris had disappeared. Harvin watched, fascinated, trying to deny the hollow, sick feeling in his stomach. I see. I hear. The smiling one screaming. It is written in the stars that the Capitol may keep before him for all the rest of his days the smiling face of his senor. But... Yes. Yes. But it is also written that the sight of it will also drive the Capitao into madness. Yes, I see. No more. Rubbish, all of it. Capitao. Forgiveness is better than vengeance. Get out of here. Jealousy is like a poison, Capito. The senor stands with the trail, folks. Think well. Get out! And the archaeologist fell back soaked with sweat onto his cot, helpless, alone. The old man left, and Harvin's mind sailed upstream following a batalo, 
where a lovely blonde girl and a handsome young man sat very close together. Take me as you find me, but let me go. Diana! Smiling face. Blasted, she was always smiling, laughing at me. Insolent Brazilian. What if I could, I could only follow them, get my hands around his neck? First handsome, virile young idiot to come along, she'd left me. She'd left me with these grinning shawanties to get back to Bellum without a guide. Boy, where the devil are you hiding? Can you get me purity again? No, wait, he won't go. It's horrible country. Ah, you porters, send them to me now. And the shawanty raced off and returned almost immediately with four grinning vulture men. Harbin blurted out his order in Portuguese. Then again, the few halting words of Chavante. But the vulture men merely shook their heads, grinned, and looked foolish. Senora. He drew the form of a woman in the air with his hands. I, I want you to bring her back to me. He made a scooping motion with his hands towards himself. Suddenly, the eyes of the Urubu leader gleamed. He nodded, comprehending. Uh, Turi, uh, white man. Ah, uh, the white man? Mario. The devil with Mario. I don't care what you do about him. And he made a broad motion of dismissal, and the Urubu grinned delightedly. Uh, uh, white man. <laughs> the evil-eyed, heavily scarred man grinned again and made a vague but easily followed throat-cutting gesture. And then he was gone with his flock, like eager scavenger birds. Forgiveness better than vengeance. Well, after a time I shall forgive her. We can still build a life together. Probably after I forgive her, she'll love me more, really love me. What did he mean, though? Purity. A smiling face. Drive me into madness. Three days passed. And then a fourth. And Sir Cedric Harbin lay and sweated helplessly in his cot. She'll cry. Fling her arms around my neck and beg forgiveness. I will forgive her, gladly. It's all I want, to get her back again. To have her back again, smiling. A smiling face, the same as always. I wonder... I wonder what the Urubu meant when I said... about Mario. <clears throat> suppose she loves the blighter. Have I any right to... Ah, but what sort of life would she lead with a jungle guide? <laughs> Whatever the rotter gets, he richly deserves it. Killing a man or having him killed for seducing a wife is the accepted thing here in Brazil. It's a hot-tempered country. Capito, you have given an order to the Urubu men, and it is not good. The senor stood at the fourth trail, and he has taken the wrong turning. And the old one lighted the evil-smelling pipe and smoked silently for a while. Then he closed his eyes and intoned once more. Ah, I see. A lost city which the jungle has eaten. Great blocks of stone carven with strange writing. The smiling one stands before it. While the senor takes her picture. The devil, you say. The blood has not only stolen my wife, but he's jumped the gun on my expedition, eh? Going to claim the credit for finding my... Well, it's good enough for him, whatever they do to him. I'm glad I sent them. Glad. They are children. Do not condemn the forest people. 
to go only to do the capital's bidding. All right. So I told them to kill him. What's it to you, you shriveled up old fool? Get out of here. They should be back by tomorrow sundown with my wife. That's all I want. I'll never let her out of my sight again. Back at Belém. Uh, decent hotel. I'll make her forget all about Mario. I'll shower her with presents. Make subtle love to her. My darling, I'm sending this message back by one of the Chavantes. By now you must know we didn't go to Matura and never planned to go. I persuaded Mario to take me on to your lost city, so your expedition needn't be a flop. My dear, it seemed to mean so much to you, and I couldn't bear to see you looking so disgusted with yourself. I didn't tell you because I knew you'd stop this from trying it alone. Mario has taken some pictures, and I've copied a few hieroglyphics off the stones, also some pottery. Darling, you and your Colonel Fawcett and your silly paper in Rio were right. There is a sort of temple here. Inca, I believe. The altar stone for sacrifice is inlaid with gold and silver. Oh, I wish you could see it. But I've made some maps, and we can come back here after your rig. The note ended abruptly, a pen stroke straggling down the paper from the last word. Harbin looked up into the eyes of the Urubu, and that man happily made his throat-cutting gesture again. And suddenly, like a cold hand upon his heart, Cedric Harbin remembered what the Inspector of Indians had said about the Urubu tribe. Not a history of cannibalism, but of head-hunting. What have I made Diana witness? What terrible rights. She'll never forgive me. For <laughs> Where's... where's my wife? Tell her to come here. Bring her here, quickly. The Urubu grinned evilly, nodding several times like a small boy proud of his homework. He returned again, almost immediately, carrying a small wicker basket. Even before he jerked off the lid and saw the shrunken thing inside, lips stitched together in a hideous travesty of a smile, the long blonde hair unbound and carefully brushed clean of blood flecks. <gasps> Harbin began to scream. Beyond Midnight is presented every Friday night at half past nine by...